Welcome back to The Tasting Room, episode 15. I did have to look that up. Yep. I, every our, time. Was it last time we didn't know the episode number either? I think he, we Jesus. even said the wrong number. We might have. Yeah. <laughs> it all runs together. It's because of this and because of this. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. But it, actually, I caught myself. I actually didn't say what beer we drank. <laughs> uh, we, we drank what did Cat we bring, Austin? We, we, we brought the Castelline Colch. I think I said Castelline. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah, but good. It, if people were watching for the first time, they don't know that's your Colch. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, who do we got today? Who'd you bring with us? Uh, with you, we brought Max Schaefer all the way down from, or all the way up from Jackson Hole, Wyoming. No, I think you're right. I think it's down. Down. Yeah, we he went down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, but it's a really cool, really cool deal to have him here in Tulsa. Yeah. I've been looking forward to it for about six years now. He and I graduated uh, from Siebel and Dumans Academy um, as master brewers together, and uh, so. He's been hearing about the cabin, about the brewery for a long, long time. And finally, after the COVID shenanigans and whatnot, we got him down. It's a fun conversation. Let's just get right to it. You ready? Absolutely. All right. Here's our interview after the break. Cheers. Hey, I'm John. I'm one of the partners here at Grassfire Creative. We are a production company. We do animation, video production, live production, anything you need to creatively tell both your story and your business's story. Along with the content that we create, we also provide the strategy behind how to get it in front of the eyeballs that matter to you. We're located right in the middle of the United States in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so no matter where you are, we're just a short flight away. Bottom line is we are very excited to both meet you and tell your business's story. Please do reach out to us one of the ways below via email or phone number and check out more about us at our website, grassfirecreative.com. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the tasting room. Yeah, this is the first. Uh, I was telling Jordan earlier, like, this is a start to a Wednesday right here, boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, 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 we got some beer and be some an bourbon interesting. at uh, 1045 in the morning on a Wednesday. So. Hey, but when you're Why talking not? to two brewers, I mean, that's not out of the ordinary. My liver needs to catch up. Oh, well, yeah, I think ours is just deteriorating <laughs> faster. <laughs> yeah, mine's working through a bunch of stuff. So yeah. this will be great. We'll get yeah. right back into yeah. it. Yeah. Who'd you bring but, today? Uh, Max Schaefer from Roadhouse Brewing Company out, up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I'm so excited for this because I love yeah. your brewery. I really do. Yeah. I told and, you that yesterday at Mother Road. It's, yeah. We'll get to that. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. His yeah. beer is awesome. Uh, Multi metal winner. What, you know, I don't know how many hundreds of medals you have, but. They're that's all cool. on your mantle, right? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah. Does your mom I, collect them? Yeah, it's how I roll. You know, yeah. I just like to look at them every morning. Sometimes you wear them, yeah. just depending on, yeah. 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 <laughs> but Max and I graduated from Siebel uh, and Dumans Academy in Germany together. I was going to ask the relationship and how yeah. it was formed, because I didn't know if you were a skier up in Jackson Hole or how, how that happened. So it was over yeah. in Germany? Over in Germany in Chicago. Uh, and yeah, had a blast obviously during school together and uh i could imagine we've yeah our our cool or you know we've got our big class and then a little coalition outside of that that really keep up uh really well together and we try to do collabs and whatnot when we can but this is actually max first time in oklahoma really sure is sure yeah. is okay so let me i guess I'll tell you what i'll ask the first question then. go for it because i'm curious and we did this with who was it from Balconies? It was Balconies, right? Yeah. Uh, we like your your thought of what Oklahoma would be, Tulsa would be versus the reality of what <laughs> Tulsa is. How different was it? You know, I'd say I'd say it's pretty good and different. I okay. flew down from Chicago, so flew you know through the Midwest and staring out the window. The Saw the flyover right states. Totally. And, all, yeah, and yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. wow, all right. I mean, Wyoming, and, and I actually live over in Idaho, so probably equally as forgotten about states sure, in sure. some regards. Um, but it landed. My wife was like, "What's Oklahoma like?" You know, and she's from Denver, so she's kind of got some little bit shout of out Denver. Yeah, I love Denver. And I was like, "He's like, you know, it's pretty flat for sure, but there's a lot of water." So that really shocked me. How much water we flew yeah. over coming uh, coming yeah. down from the north? Um, but I've been really floored, really blown away. We've had some great food, had some great drinks. Um, the brewing scene down here is pretty mm. fantastic. Um, so I'd say, you know, I came into it with a probably a pretty typical stereotype of sure, what Oklahoma sure. might be like. And I'm leaving with a, a much uh, newer and greater, you know, found love for, for what Tulsa and 
what I'd imagine yeah. other populations in Oklahoma are like. So uh, Tulsa is unique, I, and I'm not going to talk shit on other cities no. in Oklahoma because Oklahoma City has <laughs> stuff that Tulsa doesn't day. have. I, we would, <laughs> um, but Tulsa is very unique in in that way. Um, I ran into you guys at Mother Road yesterday. How would you describe Oklahoma barbecue to people that haven't had it? I love barbecue. I love it. Um, I and I asked Austin. I was like, "What is this? Like, is it like Oklahoma its own kind of barbecue? You know, like, or does it kind of is it a bologna goes into the mix a little bit? <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah. kind of a thing, you yeah. know. And I got I got a poultry dish, um, and I wanted to see that. You know, I think mm. it's like me walking into a brewery and being like, "What you what do you got for a yellow lager? Sure, What's your pilsner sure. like? Um, and it was turkey. And I, I was that was pretty Ooh, fun. So nice. That was absolutely delicious. Um, you know, the ribs were beautiful. It was some of the bre- best brisket I've yeah. ever had. So that was 1907. Um, you guys had yesterday. If yeah. we have time today, I want to take you down the alley to Oak Heart. Uh, their turkey is the best turkey I've ever had from a barbecue. Wow. Ooh, wow. Mm. And I know that's saying something. Mm. Um, it's just, yeah. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Um, so this is smart. I don't want to start yeah. at 1045 with uh, <laughs> what proof is this? I don't even know. 113 <laughs> proof. So let's uh, yeah. let's get the palette ready with uh, what you bring. Cast so the line. I, I actually brought this purposefully. I know that I've brought this to the uh, podcast before, uh-huh. but um, I brought this purposefully mainly because uh max and i obviously german trained brewers mindset whatnot um but we we actually brewed a doppelstiche for our uh collaboration english please so uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah sorry I, th- that wasn't a uh, that's an actual that's a flex word. that's a yeah. flex uh, so is it a doppelbach so kind of okay. but so th- it, there's a beer style called an alt beer which is made like what 50 kilometers west of uh, Cologne mm. and those two cities rival each other they their their rivalry of Oklahoma City to Tulsa is way deeper okay so yeah yeah, double state. We were drinking some when we were out there, in, you know, in Munich during school, and it was really fun. And I'm like, "What is this?" And the best way I can describe it, it's a kind of a heavily hopped German amber ale. Interesting, but it's got alt beer roots. I don't think I've had yeah. many darker beers that were heavily hopped. Yeah. It should be fun. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'd say? Heavily hopped for like. In the for German a darker world. beer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. especially for the Germans too. You know, we make a lot of IPA. So when I think of heavily hopped, I think of heavily hopped. And we were kind of joking at it. You know, we threw, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 pounds at this beer. And it's like, yeah, that's a heavily hopped German yeah. beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to dry hop it. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. It should be fun. Yeah. It should be really nice. So for the rivalry, would you say it's a Bayern Munich, Bayern Leverkusen? Mm. Yeah. Type rivalry. Yeah, let me let yeah. me go sports on you yeah. with, with Germany. No, definitely. Okay. Right. Definitely. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Uh so I guess I'll ask yeah, my go first ahead. question. You're up. Um so you've seen and lived and grown up in Jackson Hole, and it's kind of you know, obviously Tulsa's it's actually a larger town than Jackson, but Jackson gets 90 times more people through it than Tulsa, Tulsa does on a regular basis. So uh, what have what have you seen Jackson's number one point of growth and why it has blown up to what it is to today? Wow. Yeah. Oh, there's been so much different growth in Jackson, mm. which has been crazy. My grandparents moved there in the in the 80s or so and very different town. Austin and I are reminiscing about what Jackson, what you know, was the it was the old west still. Sure, you know, thirty years ago, um, it's changed. We've had a lot of money move in. Um, you know, Wyoming's got a wonderful income tax free component to the state, so we we have a a lot of big wealth who comes mm. in and, and likes to be in Jackson. Um, I think you know a lot of the other growth that's occurred has just become a really cool little center and hub in wyoming um it's a great arts community great food great beverage um, and obviously the recreation is just endless you know you can yeah. walk out your back door pretty much in any residential part of jackson and get on a mountain bike or mm. you know start hiking whatnot um, all of our rivers and our lakes yeah so, what uh we got in the car from your house and it was a 30 minute drive to the backside of the Tetons. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, not bad. That's a unique skiing mountain in place too, because I, I've been there. One, I love Jackson. Uh, I've been there once and it's, it was so icy. It was much <laughs> icier than, than the Rockies than, than I would get going, going into the, the mountains and just outside of Denver. 
when I was living there, and it caught me off guard. A, it's steep. Yeah. And, and B, it's icy. And that's a weird combo if you're trying to ski. For sure. Yeah. For sure. When it's icy, it's icy. And right. It's bad. Right. Um, but, you know, we get some phenomenal snow. Mm-hmm. So, um, and obviously that's another big draw. Jackson, let's go ski Jackson. Yep. And a lot of people come there to ski it in the winter. And unlike, you know, the Front Range and the I-70 corridor, you really just have Jackson. You know, we've got our small little mountain right. over on right. the backside, Grand Targhee. There's the Locals Hill in Jackson called Snow King, um, which has like the, some of the steepest runs in the no U.S. Kidding. Yeah, pretty wild. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah, they just wrapped up this past weekend the, uh, I think it's the International or maybe the National Snowmobile Hill Climb Championship. Oh, wow. So you just, it's guys trying to high point on Snow King, ripping up. That would be so much fun fast. to watch. Oh, you could, it, throughout the entire town all week, you just hear the brrrr, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I love it's, that. It's hill climb. Here weekend. it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I want to push on the, the ski part of it for a second. Um, in a town like, like Jackson Hole, do you find business to be, what, what am I trying to say, based on time of year? So Absolutely. like when you get that influx of skiers, business is hopping, and then in the summer, I'm assuming people still come to hike, but do you see a distinct difference in, in seasons as far as business? But definitely. A huge distinct change in our business in the seasons, both with clientele and in numbers. Mm. Um, it's pretty expensive to come ski Jackson and also to get there. It's really hard to get to the, mm-hmm. get to the By town. the way, when I started going there, I think a ski lift ticket was 20 bucks. Oh, totally. I think Boy, what year, was that like 30 years ago? <laughs> God bless. Yeah. It's $201 a day now. That's insane. Um, so if you think about taking your family out to go ski for a couple of days, I mean, just to sit on the chair is going to potentially cost you anywhere from 800 to a thousand bucks for yep. a family of four to five. Um, so we see a very different clientele in the winter. Um, you know, it just kind of prices some people out. So we don't see as many people who are coming into Jackson in the winter to ski as we do tourists in the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think most recently the town of Jackson reported like June 1st through Labor Day, we see anywhere from five to six and a half million people. Wow. Um, that surprises that, me. Okay. It's a ton, you know, and we get a lot of people who fly down to Utah and get a, you know, rent a, mm. a, a, a car and they'll go do all the national parks down in southern Utah, drive up in Grand Teton, Yellowstone, keep going up to Glacier. So we get these pretty cool little, you know, influxes of people mm. um, who pack up a, a van and maybe drive out from wherever and just do a family vacation. It's one of our, our flagship beers is actually called Family Vacation. And in the summer, you know, That's you get awesome. all those people who are like, oh, my gosh, we're out of, look at this, we're on <laughs> family vacation and pick our six pack it's and my beer. mail up yeah. and it's it's perfect so um and so in the summer too it's also a very different client i mean beer drinking in the summer in jackson Mm. is is pretty heavy compared to maybe the winter where people might be drinking wine and cocktails i'd assume there's a lot of patios in jackson hole ton of patios our brew pub is right in the town square in jackson and we have this beautiful deck it's the only deck um we're on the second story of a building and it looks out over the square so some great patio spaces around and yeah so it's very different clientele but we see a lot more people in the summer and then we completely I wouldn't say die, but we everything shuts down in, the, in mm. our shoulder seasons, you know. So as soon as kids are back in school over Labor Day, we see a you know a pretty steep decline up until about Thanksgiving, um, and so it, it slows down a lot. The parks start closing, and then in the in the in the spring, so right about now, actually, probably next week, all the mountains will start closing, and town will just completely shut down. Restaurants shut down. You get your vacation then. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We, yeah. Just pure shoulder season. You know, we, we've got about 70 so people. On what do you our, mean by that shoulder season? Um, like kind of on the shoulders of our, of our peak season, gotcha. right? Gotcha. So that kind of just kind of fades off for us. And we've got about 70 people on our payroll at our, uh, at our pub, at our brew pub. And, you know, all, all of them disappear this time of year. Go down to Moab, get dirt mm. bike, you know, you're getting a little stir crazy. Yeah. You want to, you want to get your, you know, your son in. So everyone, the town disappears. Um, and it's kind of fun. It's a nice time for locals to get out Absolutely. and explore. And, yeah. Get ready. Get for to the know onslaught. your own city again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Go out to eat. You know, normally you can't go out, get a reservation mm. anywhere. So it's our time to go out and see what everyone's doing in town. And it's it's a fun time. Yeah, it's I, it's only calm would, before the storm. I would only I would probably say the only thing that kind of mirrors in Tulsa, that kind of mantra of like the town emptying is like Memorial Day or spring break. Mm. And everybody Labor goes. Day, Memorial Day, yeah. July 4th. Everyone goes, to, goes the to the lake. Yeah. Everyone yeah. goes to the lake. Like I've had a lot of people ask, like, oh yeah, are you excited for Memorial Day at the brewery? You're probably going to be really busy. Mm, it's the like, slowest like, weekend of the year. <laughs> <laughs> We're dead. Crickets. I mean, now the two days leading up to it, two days leading people up, people come buy cans yeah, and do, yeah. To go sales or sure, out sure. the wazoo and whatnot. But yeah, uh, we don't, how long is your shoulder like, uh, shoulder season where the town empties 
You know, I'd say it's all, it's all of April and pretty much all of May. Well, now I know when oh, to go. Wow. Yeah. Actually, this is a pro tip. The fall is the time to come. Okay. After Labor Day, September, October. Ooh. It's still beautiful. Do you get early snow? We do get early snow up high. Yeah. Um, you know, it'll sometimes we'll get snow in the valley by Halloween or so. But but the mountains aren't open, right? The mountains aren't open. Okay. They open right about Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, Jackson okay. opens, I believe, Thanksgiving Day. Um, what so, a fun way to spend Thanksgiving. Oh, totally. That would be awesome. Totally. It's a lot of fun. Eat some turkey and go ski. Or exactly. vice versa. Go exactly. ski and eat some turkey. I want to ask about the brewery uh, as my actual question. Go for it. Um, because when I was, you know, I met, I don't remember who I met from Roadhouse at GABF back in 2018 when I was in Denver. Um, but I, I picked up on it then and then reading the website, I feel like you might be the biggest foodie brewery in the country, possibly. <laughs> now, that's like Torst has like a Michelin star restaurant in their kitchen, so maybe not. But talk to me about the the influence of food on the brewery and the beer on food, because I know it's a symbiotic thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Roadhouse started back in 2012 mm -hmm. or so. Um, we have two co-owners, um, a gentleman named Colby Cox, and then his business partner, Gavin Fine, and they came together to create Roadhouse at one point. And Gavin, at the time, he's been in Jackson for, I think, just north of 20 years mm. and got he's from chicago he got it cut his teeth up at let us entertain you and, and then started working in uh, some of the restaurants in jackson went to culinary school and all that and so he has about seven restaurants in jackson already on his own and so when colby approached gavin um about putting in a brewery he was like we should put a brewery in this and actually in a barbecue place um and so gotcha. it's out towards um jackson Old mountain resort um and so we, we do a lot of other fun things. We've got a USDA certified butcher shop associated with our company. No, now like you're Gavin speaking Owens. my language. Yeah, it's pretty okay. cool. And all actually, right. they're just across the parking lot from us at the at the production brewery. And, you know, they do uh, sausages and all sorts of great cuts of meat for all of our restaurants. Um, we have an ice cream manufacturing company that sells ice cream sandwiches and packed pints and a catering company. So food, you know, and, and a baker, mm -hmm. all this stuff. So we like to make everything in-house, um, pull our own mozzarellas and stuff for the restaurants. So it really is a food venture as well as a... A brewery. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Like food is definitely up at the, you know, at the forefront for us as a brewery. Um, so we started making our own beer at the original brewery back in 2012 and 2013. So we could distribute it to some of our smaller restaurants, kind of, mm. you know, making, making beers that would go with the cuisine. We've got anything from Italian restaurants to a raw bar, French bistro style. We've got kind of an Asian French influence restaurant. So we've got a lot of Which different things. And that's really all fun. around yeah. Jackson or it's is all, it outside of Jackson? It's all as well? in Jackson. Okay. Yep. So right. about four of them are right in town, Jackson and the others are out in the in the, at the ski mountain um, okay and so eventually and then where i came into the game was to take our seven barrel our original seven barrel brew house and scale it up to our 30 barrel production facility um, for larger distribution and whatnot and at the same time we were closing the original brewery um, to move it we got an opportunity to take over the space on the town square where our brew pub now sits and we have a, a five barrel brew house in there and a I love that huge spot. kitchen yeah. it's awesome yeah. um, and so we've got a culinary team in there that's like so driven with the food and how do we get involved with the food and, and the beer mm. we make sure when we're brewing beers you know we can brew pretty eclectic things. Um, for example, we had a we did a ramen night. We do a ramen night all through the winter on Mondays. We donate. I love this place. <laughs> it's pretty fun. We, yes. Our 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 executive sous chef, um, he he nerded out on ramen. You know, he was making all of his broths homemade. He was doing all this stuff, trying to figure out how to make his sure. noodles, braising his get the pork. dashi right, and exactly, get all that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we we at the time we made a yuzu rice lager. You know that we can specifically pair mm. for ramen. How night. good is that? Um, yeah. And so it's a lot of fun where we can work on those recipes with the chefs. Um, they we did a bison short rib all winter that uses oats and we called it uh, brewers risotto. I'm so. hungry. I'm hungry, man. <laughs> so we would brewers actually make risotto. risotto. Yeah. Nice. So they would take the flaked oats from the brew house. Yeah, um, yeah. And then we'd actually grab some of the wort off of the brew that day, usually a lighter beer. And then instead of using How white cool wine for risotto, you yeah. know, make it with wort and, and make risotto that way. So that's we awesome. love to play so with cool. it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, brag on yourself for a second in, in your brewery. Would you say because of all of those concepts and restaurants and all of that, that as far as the footprint for food in Jackson Hole, that you guys are one of the big dogs? Yeah, I yeah. would definitely say so. Yeah. Um, not only with the scale of restaurants we have, but also, um, you know, the presentation and, the, and mm, all the effort mm -hmm. that goes in behind the menus. Um, it's definitely, you know, it's our, the owner is Gavin Fine. 
and uh, in his restaurant group is called the Fine Dining Restaurant Group. But what it truly, a, what is. a name to be in that uh, business, totally, right? God. Totally. That's so to have to that, be, yeah. it's just it's it's pretty perfect. Um, so there's some other great restaurants. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's some great, great yeah. food in Jackson, and I love eating at all of them. Um, but Gavin definitely has has a good little thing going with all of his. And spots. do all of them. If you go to them, do the, do you know that it's affiliated with Roadhouse? Um, you might. Or do you hide that a little bit? Yeah, you, you might know it. I think as a tourist coming into town, you probably would have no idea. Okay. So You're, it doesn't say like so-and-so a Roadhouse concept or anything like that? No, correct. Okay. So we're we're under the umbrella. So it is really like the fine dining restaurant group, and they're our sister company. Gotcha. So okay. there's the Roadhouse brewery group which is our production facility and then our brew pub and then the fine dining restaurant group manages the brew pub for us because gotcha. we're, we're brewers yeah. at heart and we didn't want to even go sure. down that road sure, and sure, try sure. and do it so we we're all integrated in a sister company and and so you wouldn't really know okay you know? yeah cool. as as an outsider i can answer answer that question because we had dinner goodness it was like a restaurant with a bottle shop oh yeah in it yeah uh, bin 22 yeah and yeah. i actually went there yeah. I like that place. It's a cool place. Yeah, so that's really cool. So that's their place. See, I, you, wouldn't, I didn't you, know that. Okay. Yeah, it, cool. it is so different that you wouldn't. If yeah. you were just to go a, a walker on the street, no, you wouldn't know. Interesting. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. pretty cool. So we keep them pretty separate. If, you, if you're pretty savvy in, in the craft beer world and you happen to look at all the handles in these restaurants and you see that... So I didn't notice that, yeah, but yeah. I didn't know if that's just because we were in Jackson and it was... Road, you know, I didn't know if it was why it was set up that way but it makes sense now totally okay. you know all the handles but one are usually roadhouse handles mm, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun um you know we have an italian restaurant out in the village and so the, the other handle is a peroni handle of course you know we yeah. have other you know i think we have stella on it our french bistro mm -hmm. type thing so otherwise it's roadhouse so if, you, if cool. you're paying attention yeah. you see all the the red and white handles you're like hmm, hmm. something's now going you get on it. <laughs> Maybe we should uh, get a bearded theologian handle up there or a cast oh, yeah. line. You know? Ooh. Yeah. So is this, mm. and I know I'm asking like five questions. You <laughs> You're are owed a question. No. Is the beer that you guys are brewing, the word I asked, the German word, is that uh, is that going to be up <laughs> like at your at your spots in Jackson? Are you going to put it on? Um, probably not. They'll probably just okay. serve it down here. Um, gotcha. So Austin and Lisa and, and some of the other Cabin Boys gang, they came up. I was probably three years. It was years. just Lisa and I. It was just Lisa and you. Yeah. So it was about three, three years yep. ago or so. And we brewed a beer up there on our pilot system. Gotcha. And that gotcha. just, yeah, actually, yeah, right. We two. brewed two beers. Yeah. Um, and so we brewed those and those just stayed up there. So how does um, that work? I, I, I notice everyone loves to do collabs and I love when people do collabs. Yeah. Is it the brewery in which you go to, whoever's traveling? So let's say the home brewery, do they then basically keep that beer? Yeah. Or do you guys share? Do you send kegs? Out? Like, so, how does that work? So you could, if you wanted to skirt the lines of legalities. Oh, so it's a legality but, thing. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, doing a here, there collaboration, like, it allows so much freedom because okay. there's no paperwork to be signed. Gotcha. No contracts. So this was the return trip. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Long overdue. Like, gotcha. Like, gotcha. let's say. Well, COVID we, happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, let's say we <laughs> wanted to distribute You're this forgiven. beer. <laughs> We wanted to distribute this beer that Max and I made here this week up there. We'd have to get like a one day distri that makes perfect distribution sense. Okay. contract yeah. and it would be a nightmare. Yeah. It'd yeah. be a nightmare. I'll so shut up now and let you ask a question. No, yeah. no, no, no. No, but, but that makes yeah. perfect sense. I didn't think about the legality <laughs> of it and the taxes and the whatever else. Yeah, you know? yeah. Just keeping it in house and the really it's a great, fun way that brewers really, you know, Max and I probably have a different uh, perspective of collaborations than most brewers. Um, one, it's about relationships. But two, I always encourage my team to come away from a collaboration and learn something from That's each other. Yeah. Whether, yeah. You know, whether it's about the beer that you're making, but typically, usually, you know, the, the beer that we're making as a collaboration almost becomes an afterthought of all of the conversations and collaboration of like, why do you do this? What do you do with your, oh, talk to me about your process fund? here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm with you. you. Yeah. That that's kind of the more important thing for us. I, I don't know. I'm, no, I totally I'm, agree. I totally yeah. agree. Um, I think we both kind of have like the same brewery per capita, both Tulsa and Jackson. Sure, we've, sure. we've got a fair bit of breweries in Jackson and we've got fantastic relationships with all of them, but it's, it's great to bring in other people who are brewing somewhere else. Who you don't talk to every day and just getting that chance to, mm -hmm. you know, 
ask those questions like, Oh, yeah. what are you doing? Why is this the process? And it's amazing. You know, my, my dad's an architect and he has to research his architecture certification every year. And as soon as I, you know, I've been brewing for about 10 years and, mm. and I have to do all sorts of stuff, either MBA stuff or whatever things they are. And he was like, just remember, try and take away 10% of something. Like, mm. I bet you, you'll know 90% of it, but try and take away 10%. And, and if you do, it's a good benchmark it to it. shoot for. Yeah. 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 And so yeah. it's always trying to learn something from each other. And I mean, we all make, we all make beer at the end of the day, but right. how, like the actual process, it's great to yeah. spitball and chat. Mm. Uh, so this will be a really fun thing uh, for the listeners to know, but this was kind of an anecdotal thing. This is I, this is not going to be a question, but cool. I want you to explain why Roadhouse brought you in to scale up from a seven barrel to a 30 barrel, because people in the brewery world have heard that. Like if you're a craft beer drinker, yeah, I'm, uh, we're going from a seven to a 30 barrel brew house. And they're like, oh, cool, rad, more beer. <laughs> yay!" But um, which is like, true. but Roadhouse did it right. And they brought in Max for a very specific reason. But I want you to explain what that process actually looks like and how complicated that is. <laughs> well, well, I'm flattered. I, I, it's 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 a great story. But, you know, but um I, I, a lot of it was right place, right time. I, um, like most crappers, I started as a home brewer. I love to cook and I love science. My degrees in, in, a, in a discipline of biology. Um, and so the combination of those is great. So I started home brewing and then I got a job at another large regional craft, um, at Grand Teton Brewing, mm. um, pretty much right out of college. And I started in the bottling line and started clocking out, you know, learn, and have, helping the brewers mill in, just doing whatever I could. And the brewmaster um, at the time at Grand Teton is a very dear friend of mine. He's the officiant of my wedding. He, he's a huge mentor for mm. me. His name's Rob Mullen. He was probably brewing longer than I had been alive when he hired me. Um, he's one of these OG <laughs> mm -hmm. brewers. Um, he is quasi legend yeah for sure yeah um and so he worked me through the whole brewery um was seller manager you know ran packaging for a while kind of the de facto head brewer was the overnight brewer on a you know 30 barrel brew house i guess that's a key point right we were doing we had a sure, 30 barrel sure. brew house yeah. there and large format fermenters and all that and, and eventually after we went to siebel rob departed after a long tenure at grand teton i became the brewmaster there um and then ultimately the roadhouse team approached me um we had some great conversations about uh, my philosophy with hops and brewing and um you know one thing i always preach that i think really resonated with with roadhouse one is my love for beer and food mm -hmm. so coming mm -hmm. full circle back to the initial or previous conversation sure. um but also just like this quest for continual improvement right like not being stale and stagnant with with a, a beer yeah maybe that beer sold a you know ton of volume two years ago but you know craft changes every day so kind of mm -hmm. progressing that and changing it and seeing what's new and what's different so um came in and read through all the recipes and um colby the other owner of roadhouse is, is a, an amazing home brewer he's got some background in, in craft brewing himself um award-winning home brewer and i was looking through all these recipes and it was it was that streamline and simplicity i think mm. that people forget so on our seven barrel system it's great yeah you can sure like a 55 pound bag of malt we're gonna pull 10 pounds out of it and we'll we'll do it that way so as i started scaling things up and saw our, our core beer wilson ipa um we do about I think it's about 50, 55% of our annual volume is this West Coast inspired IPA. And, and at the time I looked at the recipe, I was like, we're not, we're not going to weigh 40 pounds out of this bag. Whole bag goes, we're cutting the bag, you know, like inventory, right. you know, ordering, we're going to, we got to like streamline these things. So we, we came in and, and uh, or I came in and, and streamlined all these recipes and, you know, we're not going to put in 7.8 pounds of citra in this dry hop. Let's round it one way or the other. And we're going to read. That just sounds like a time it. suck. Total time uh, suck. Yeah. 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 And inventory at the end of the month is a nightmare because you're like, sure. I'm off 0.29 pounds, uh, you know, and going through that whole game. Um, and then also, too, you know, moving up. And the quality in the lab standpoint of everything mm. was was another big thing. We invested a pretty solid six figures into our lab right when we opened the production facility. And we've had a full-time lab manager since we've been running that for five years and um, helping come bring in the SOPs for everything and, and how to streamline both on a production scale and, and just moving through moving through the whole, the yeah. whole mix. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of where I landed with them. And it's been great. And yeah. It, it's a uh, it, – and that – that's less than the Reader's Digest version of sure. uh, scale up. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <sighs> man, it's always. Are we ready uh, for this? Go for it. 
guys, it's after we, uh, 11 now, so Max, it's okay. Max yeah, and I and Lisa uh, tied one last, on. last night tied one on. Uh, but we did get to go to Valkyrie and Prosimo. And, oh, thanks uh, for the call. I appreciate that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I just wanted my, you know, alone time with my friends. Understood. You know? Understood. I wasn't too productive on a cell phone at that point anyway. I don't fair, know. I don't fair. know if any of us would have been able to. Valkyrie's my jam. I love that place. Oh. Yeah. It was overwhelming. They handed me right? the, the menu. and, I, and Just look at that wall. Of, totally. Yeah, They're like, here, check yeah. out the menu. And I opened up to the first page and I was like, mm, no, like I might have to come back and look at this when I can so, really focus. Aaron, yeah. who owns Valkyrie, was on well, probably three episodes, three, three or, or four, four episodes, episodes ago. Yeah. And he brought a well a wild turkey a dusty turkey he called it that was distilled in 1979 wow yeah. i think it was wow it was a 12 year at the time so it came out like it was 43 years old or yeah something, something like i mean it was oh my god it was ridiculous <laughs> at, and and we only figured out how expensive the bottle it was after we drank yeah. it and, and he I kept like, being like oh here have some more and i knew like to an extent i was like man Okay, but like, <laughs> I, I know what you're serving me. And he's like, hey, whiskey's made to be consumed. And I was like, okay. I, I was a little bit more naive, and I was just like, yeah. Give, give me more, more. Give me more. <laughs> so what we're drinking, I don't know if you, how big of a bourbon whiskey guy are you? Um, I love bourbon uh -huh. and whiskey. It's great. I might not be as in tune with sure, all of it, sure. but I, I do appreciate it. So a, a group on YouTube called the Bourbon Junkies, they're fantastic to to watch or whatever they put up content it's dan and sean are their two names i joined their patreon just to get some of their barrel picks and so this came from rebel um, which i hadn't heard of uh, but it's out of out of kentucky but it's a weeded it's a weeded bourbon and so this is one that they went up and picked um it's you know distilled in bardstown so right in the middle of of whatever that's called the bourbon trail mm -hmm. uh, nice 113 proof <laughs> uh, they call it <laughs> as you can see on the sticker they call it bourbon junkies pecan pie Nice. So it's supposed to have some sort of a, you know, sweet it's, yeah. it's pecan got a little chocolate yeah. to it, a little cherry. It does. Uh, Did I interrupt? Were you about to ask a question when I said, "Are we ready oh, for I, this?" Or are we? I yeah. don't know. No, I was going to say something. It's always, you know, uh, you know, focusing on you know the the, the community impact oh, that yeah. Tulsa is going through and like our growth uh pattern and you know growing pains and whatnot it's always kind of scary to bring someone in mm. from the outside and be like yeah this, so valkyrie really great bar top five in the nation maybe po possibly do you like it yeah <laughs> right because then you feel like you're almost like guilted into saying yes it's like oh uh, yeah it's great it's like oh. no it, but they do a great job it's something they i've do. been you know to even go back and give you some more answers to your first question, my, imp my impressions of Tulsa. Mm -hmm. I have been floored by just the, maybe for lack of a better term, but like the hipster vibe mm. I've gotten, you know, like it's, it's these. It's a little bit of Austin up here. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. I was yeah. going to relate it to Portland, Oregon being, sure. uh, you sure. know, uh, yeah. Pacific Northwest. Um, but it, it's, it's really blown my mind. Like where I've walked into a couple of places like, you know, Valkyrie last night and, and we've got, you know, even some of the breweries we've went to and it's like, wow, like these are, mm. I mean, these are impressive. These are beautiful places and well yeah. thought out yeah. and designed. And yeah, I could get into a lot of trouble in some of those bars for sure. Either join, join the club. Or, uh, yeah. Yeah, inebriated. Like. End of the month. <laughs> welcome your statement. welcome like, to our fuck. story. <laughs> What's funny about this, which I, I mean, I'll say this, you guys didn't experience it, but I, I've had some of it, you yeah. know, it, it wasn't a new open when I brought it. It has changed quite a bit sitting with the neck pour gone and letting the air get in there and really yeah i definitely like the sweetness on the back end yeah. was not there when i first opened it oh, that's which cool. is a lesson to everyone at home if you have a bourbon collection like a drink it okay and if you want to use it as investment buy two bottles and drink one save the other but like do the neck pour give it like a week and then come back to it because it totally changes like with the how it interact i'm not a scientist i don't know why but when it interacts <laughs> with the air Something about Ma it like Max changes. Would probably yeah. be able to speak more. Enough to put you me. on the spot, but it, it like, does happen. I like just don't know why. Kind yeah. of thing, I would probably. imagine. I wish I knew more, but that's the first thing I yeah. can think of. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Just, just from knowing what I know about producing alcoholic beverages. But yeah, yeah, it's it's lovely. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's gotten sweeter. I feel like on the back end. Like originally, there was a little bit of like an ethanol, like a little, uh, little burn on the back end. But this for 113 proof, 
I could drink this all day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is not it's hot. Kind of cool on the back of the tongue. It has, you know, you've got all of those sweet aromas, chocolate, raspberry. Little baking spice. Little baking some, spices. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I get a little bit of rye bread when, mm. I, when I wonder, on the swallow. Does this tell me the, oh, yeah. the mash bill? Yeah. That's lovely. No, it doesn't. I'm curious to know how much rye they put in that. That's interesting. Um, it probably is the wheat. Yeah, probably is. That's, that's yeah. making it, that flavor come through. So I'm curious, um, you know, we, we like to ask people about establishing and building culture and, you know, how you connect with your, you know, the people that live around you and just the community and all of that. Having so many different avenues in which you can connect with people, whether it's through the restaurant group, whether it's through the brewery, whatever. Have you learned anything about I want to say how you establish culture, but you can't necessarily push it on people. You just have to provide it and hope that they they buy in, right? But for people that listen that are entrepreneurs or bar owners or restaurant owners, have you specifically seen or, or heard or learned anything about how to properly connect with your town, your city, your area to, to really establish culture? You know, I think most simply put, you know, in, in our VP of sales says this a bunch of times, but you know, we, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk. Mm. Um, so everything that we preach as a brewery and everything we support is stuff that we also really believe in whether, you know, and there's plenty of things that roadhouse beer might be being served at that I'm there as well because I care about whatever it might be, whether it's a, a fundraiser or a, mm. a, a community event. Um, so some things we've, we've really honed in on are like really making sure that our brand is present um, at things that we believe in. So, for example, um, Teton County Search and Rescue is, is a huge component of living sure, in sure. Jackson Hole. You get hurt in the mountains, whether you're whether you're visiting, you're a 30 year seasoned veteran. If you need help, they're going to come get you. And so that was something that we firmly believed in. Um, one of our uh company mottos is live deep and we're always kind of messing around with Mm. what does that really mean to all Mm -hmm. of us um but in this case for me you know living deep is like getting you know we're getting outside we're we're playing in the mountains we're having a good time we're recreating and to have search and rescue there for us is something that we donate a fair bit of money back to they have their own podcast which is absolutely fantastic and we're a supporter on that because we want to you know people to learn and understand from other Mm. people's mistakes um and so we're you know we the ramen night i mentioned we actually donated about 20 percent of each bowl back to search and rescue that's really cool they can fly a helicopter they can make sure the you know know snowmobiles are ready to go in case someone has to get rescued um but also you know i think thinking about you know the cost benefit that we weigh all the time you know if we have a nonprofit who asks like hey you know can would you donate some beer for our or we're doing a fundraiser to you know raise money for x and mm-hmm. would you donate some beer to it and thinking about that you know to someone who doesn't work in a brewery, four cases of beer just to give to someone, that might seem like a lot, but to have your product there and to give those four cases of beer to an organization that you know, can sell them and raise money, even more money for their cause, is pretty big. And then people yeah. remember yeah. that too. Like, yeah. oh yeah, like Roadhouse is involved in this. Um, and as a company ethos, like we're a B Corp um, certified brewery, which is really cool. So um, we're the 21st brewery in the world to be certified as B Corp wow. um, okay. about a year after we opened. Um, and for those who don't know the B Corp world, it's um, it's a global organization which recognizes companies for their environmental and, and social justice movements. Um, and so our, our brewery is very sustainable and being in a beautiful part of the country with natural resources everywhere, the national parks, our rivers, our lakes, and, you know, brewing is not that environmentally friendly. Sure. Yeah. Shocker. It, it's, uh, you know, it's, it hurts sometimes mm-hmm. to see the water Be- and everything you do. 90% water. Totally. Um, and so we do everything we possibly can um, to show that we're trying to preserve our our little slice of heaven out in Jackson. Um, so we have solar arrays on the roof. We have a, you know, we recapture all of our chemicals and, and re-strengthen those so we're not just putting high strength chemical down the drain and seeing where that's going to end up. We recapture all of our heat off of our brew house. Um, you know, it's, it's cold as hell in Jackson. Ten months of the year, it's winter pretty yep. much, you know. Summer starts July 4th and it's over the first week of August, it seems, and it starts to get cold. So our cold room doesn't have it has a traditional reefer system in it but we have louvers that open and close at night and Mm. pull in just the naturally cold air so we're not burning natural gas and and using energy to cool our cold room when we have the world's largest cold room at our fingertips (laughs) Um, just open it up yeah so those those kind of things are important to us and and you know and and then telling the story right that's a hard part too is how Mm. do you tell a story without looking pretentious being like oh you know we're this b corp yeah how do you market how do you advertise yeah we we do a, a 
series, you know, obviously social media sure. is a huge component sure. for us. Um, we have some great people who are very talented at taking beautiful videos and photos, yeah. but mm -hmm. even down to making sure that that, you know, that, uh, sign in the liquor store, the heavy traffic liquor store is eye catchy and, and looks mm -hmm. good. Um, you know, we take, there's so many publications in Jackson too, you know, for that are on the bedside table of every hotel and see, you know, oh, right. Roadhouse, the pub and eatery on town square. That sounds great. 30 beers on top. Wow. We should go, you know, so just utilizing yep. all those basic avenues that we can. Um, and then obviously our, you know, packaging too is huge and thinking about, yep. And that's your bet. That's your first point of advertising. You know, when someone walks up to that cooler door, yeah, and there's ten doors of IPA that are all fantastic. What you know, what's gonna? So red truck's still there. Sure is. Okay. Sure yeah. is. It yeah. absolutely is. Yeah. We got to. We got to work on that. We had a small battery problem with. Oh that no. Where, yeah. It's. It's 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 a death trap to say the least. It's a three on a tree, and I I, I, I my parents made me learn to drive a manual before yeah. I could drive a, mm -hmm. an automatic transmission. But a three on a tree is it is something that's different. Its that's own. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a um, whole other learning. Definitely, definitely. So we've got that. We've got another fun fun tour. We've got a VW bus, the family vacation beer. Oh, okay. I mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, the logo of that is a old Volkswagen. Um, I think the van again. You know, like your traditional yeah. hippie. Mm -hmm. VW van with suitcases strapped on top. So we have one of those actually was all branded up and we can drive that around. That's There's awesome. Like eight draft, eight handle draft system in the back. So we, you know, we take oh, how it cool to is that? Yeah. We take it to, it's a great uh, family I vacation. need that. It's yeah. a great family vacation. Yeah. So. Is that for sale? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, you know, I, I hope that answers that. It does. Questions. It does. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to wrap us up with the last question? Sure. Yeah. Um, just from a, um, Oh goodness! I've lost that question and lost the thought. Fill the void for me. <laughs> Fill the Sorry. void. Fill okay, the void so before, while he thinks of the question, for people that want to come visit, you know, shoulder season versus not, do your hours change? Where can they find you? Social media handles, whatever you know, just pub. Pub, how people can find yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Roadhousebrewery.com is a great place to find us and see what's going on. Um, our social media, our Instagram is pretty up to date. Um, Facebook as well. Um, I think those are Roadhouse Brewing Co. Okay. Um, but if you search Roadhouse Beer or something sure, like that, sure. I'm sure you'll come across it. Um, our hours don't change much. Um, we have our tap room at our production facility. It's open Monday through Friday, about 4 o'clock um, until about 8 or so. Um, no food is there. If you feel like bringing a snack, bring it on in. But just beer down there. Um, and then the Roadhouse Pub and Eatery, um, that's where you should go. Yeah. Great food. There's uh, We have our experimental brew house up there, 30 beers on draft. Um, and the beers that we brew there legally can't leave that building because of Wyoming. Oh, wow. So okay. it's the only place. Literally tap room exclusive or whatever. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and that opens 1130 every day. Um, a about to about nine at night or so. Sure. I highly recommend a reservation if you're going to come see us in the summer or even in the winter. Um, it's not uncommon to see a two and a half, three hour wait to Ooh. get dinner in the summer. Um, but pro tip again, come out after Labor Day, September mm. and October. It's absolutely stunning. Bring a light jacket, but still pack your shorts. Um, it is yeah. it is a fabulous And time if people say, hey, I heard you on the Tasting Room podcast, you'll come out and do like a song and dance for them. Absolutely. All that stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. The six cool. pack in hand. Is <laughs> oh, there a, you go. There as you as go. A, as a thanks for coming to see us. But yeah, come on. If anyone's ever in Jackson, you know, please, you know. Absolutely. Give, let, yeah. let me know you saw us on this and yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll roll out the red carpet. Did I stall enough for you? Oh, yeah. All right. Did. We're good. Yeah. We're good. I, I, my brain went to like a serious question and I was just like, no. I'm going to drink more uh, of this. Does anybody what? want more? Mm, I'm good. Yeah, it is. Oh, well, <laughs> fuck. It is like 1130. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait. <laughs> uh, uh, so what? what's your favorite thing about being a brewer? Mm. And Ooh, what, that's a good way to end what, it. What... Uh, tying in community into that but what what's your favorite thing about being a brewer oh it's, i there's a couple things there's more of maybe the superficial side of it where um my wife but at the time just my girlfriend she we were walking around a music a big music um concert a weekly concert that we have and it was our it's our beer that's there and it was it, it and she was like wow everyone's drinking the beer you made. And I didn't really think about it. You know, I'm, I, I, my ego isn't really in this. Mm. I just love, I love doing what I do. Um, it's just fun. And there's a great result at the end, but I really sat back there and looked at it and was like, 
wow, everyone is, I do make this beer or in, in very involved in sure. making this beer. And that was pretty cool. And that was, that was years ago, actually, even before I was at Roadhouse and it, and that that's really stuck with me. And so it's pretty cool when I walk into a, a bar in Denver and I can see our beer on tap and I can tell, you know, wow, yeah, our, someone's drinking our beer. And that's really cool. That That's fun to see. Um, Austin and I were talking about this a bunch too, but we do a, a lot of beer dinners at, at our brew pub. And my other favorite thing, um, kind of in this vein was, is I love drinking good beer, eating good food with good people. Mm-hmm. There's like nothing, nothing on earth that makes me happier. Uh, my wife and I try and do little beer dinners at our house too, where I think it, it's, it's her excuse or, or she forces me to pull beer out of my cellar because it's go. absolutely out of control. She's like, yeah, we should do a beer dinner with our friends and you should pull like 20 bottles out of the <laughs> cellar, you know, just like start trying to get rid of them. But right. just, it's so fun to sit there and enjoy really cool beer and great food with people. Um, so that's a part of my job that I, I absolutely love. Um, but I absolutely love going to work. I mean, it's, you know, the, if, if you love what you do, you won't work right. a day in your life. Right. Yeah, sure. It's like yeah. cheesy and whatever we want to say, but like, that's truly how I feel. I mean, mm, yeah. I brew beer in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with a group of people who I love to death, you know, see more than my family as all of us in brewery sure. do work crazy yeah. hours. Um, and so I love that. I love walking into our brewery. I love the smells of, of a hot side operation going and the brew house running. It never I love, gets old. Never gets old. No. Ever. I can and, smell it from here sometimes when they're brewing. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Yeah. And I just love that. And I love being in a building, making beer with people um, who I think trust me. I obviously trust them. And, the fact that we can build a culture and work with each other to brew great beer is fantastic. Um, mm. And it's always different. That's another part that keeps it interesting. You know, yeah. Yeah. no day is, no the, day same. is the same. And yeah. that's a lot of fun because I don't think I could show up to work and do the same thing every right. day. And walk that into nine to five brewery. cubicle thing. Totally. Doesn't work, right? Totally. Yeah. And there's just days where I just throw my hands up and have to walk away from my computer and be like, I need to go do something on the floor because I got it. I got to go do something. <laughs> yep. um, so those pick are something up with my hands. Yeah, yeah. Those are all the reasons I love beer. Um, it's a great answer. It's 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 a it's a great industry to work in the camaraderie getting yeah. out getting a chance to come out to Tulsa and brew with Austin longtime friend and, yeah. and then even you know Austin took me around to some of the other breweries and you can I'm a brewer you're a brewer and immediately we're friends yeah. um, and that's yeah. a lot of fun too it's it's a cool place so as we let you go what's what's the beer you're holding on to in your cellar what's the well actually it's a beer I bought when we were out in Germany yeah um, it's uh, uh, a, a Frank Bone product uh, Bone Go. Mm. Bone Goose, um, but it's it's his black label. Okay, um, yeah. Okay. Actually, I, I, in in Belgium, I bought four cases of this beer, and they're seven fifties, and I shipped them back to myself because you know in Belgium they've got that like mail your beer services sure, back sure. to you. I bought four cases of this beer. Um, it is absolutely one of my favorite sour, one of my favorite beers ever, and I try and drink one every quarter or so awesome. just to see. And I think. I think the best buy date on the bottle is like 2048. So I'm hoping to have a couple like out. <laughs> How many's point. left? Do you have a, a I few have about left? two cases okay. left. Right. So I got to slow down. I got to pump yeah, the right? a little bit. If you're trying to get to 2048. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And I've got a couple of those stashed away in the very corner. Maybe of once every space. two years or yeah, something. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's probably the trajectory I'm going to have to do. Right. We're just going to have to go back to Belgium and buy some. Or that. Yes. I mean, yeah. Or okay. that. Okay. Darn. Well, that was good. You have anything else? We good. No, I'm good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for coming into town. Yeah, thanks absolutely. for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was yeah, fun chatting. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll be right back after the break. Cheers. Well, that was fun. That was I, super I enjoyed fun. that. Yeah. That was cool. It's cool to uh, see a perspective of, you know, someone coming from a town that has literally gone from uh, uh, dirt roads. So when I was going to Jackson Hole for the first time, mm-hmm. when I was probably three years old, the square... Uh, where most of the, the town square or whatever the town yep. square yep. was basically the only asphalt. Wow. So to just yeah. kind of put a little perspective of how much Jackson has moved forward. Um, and so that was a really cool uh, conversation about how that culture has yeah, well, exploded. I would, I can recommend two things. Um, drinking beer and bourbon at 11 AM on a Wednesday, a uh, great start to hump day. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, to visit Roadhouse when you go, because I've been to, to Jackson Hole once, and like we talked about, I didn't realize some of the establishments I ate at were, yeah. were part of that umbrella group, and then just the, the brew pub itself, and the, the brew, it's just, it's their fun. Whole, their it, whole it's a lot of fun. Their group, yeah. and their, their mantra as a con- uh, company is just awesome. Yeah. They provide really cool stuff. And if you go and you, 
you ask and, and he comes out with the six pack, take a video of the song and dance that he does and send it to us. Cause I just really want to see it. I, I want to judge his, uh, his dancing moves. Yeah. Tag, yeah. tag us and uh, give us a little shout. Fair enough. Well, that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we'll be back next week ish. I think we're finally going to have Jake Miller on from heirloom. Uh, hopefully. He's yeah. He said well. he could do this week. He's, he's feeling better. I saw him Sunday at the Good. F1 Good. Uh, watch party, but uh, I think next week we're going to try to get him on. Right on. Cool. We'll see you guys then. Cheers. Cheers.